Hi, I'm Randy from Madrona Labs, and I'm sitting down to make a short video about the new features in AltoVerb 2.0. It's now out in public beta, and you can get it from the Madrona Labs website. I'm excited about this release because it's been a year at least in the making, and in that time I've written a whole new framework uh, that's going to enable a lot of the graphics capabilities of my other plugins going forward, including Sumu, my upcoming additive synthesizer. So uh, in AltoVerb, we'll get kind of a preview of this work, so let's take a look. Uh, first thing you can see, if you drag the window, um, you know, with Alto, you could resize it, which is always important, and it, it does it. It's kind of in a clunky way, though. But I've got a whole new windowing layer, and so with AltoVerb, it just goes real fast. And in general, it's really responsive and it's going to enable really fun graphics and informational graphics. In the top left, you got this logo area. Clicking on it brings up the pop-up window. And you can see the version, the kind of plugin it is, and the architecture of the computer. In this case, ARM tells us we're running on Apple Silicon. Hooray! Uh, next, we come to the patch menu. And uh, we're in the default patch here. And it's more interesting to play with the patch menu if we have a little sound going through things. So let's make that happen with Alto's Bossa Nova patch. Clicking, from, clicking on the patch menu changes the patch. Just goes one forward. We can also interact with this menu by dragging it. So we can go forward or backward. And just by spinning it with, the, with scrolling with two fingers, uh, you can go through all the patches really quick and just see how responsive everything is. I don't know if this is that useful, but maybe you can stop somewhere random and that will be inspiring. Um, let's get back to the default and check out the file menu. Clicking that brings up another pop-up with different options. We can save the patch. It overwrites it, so if you don't want to do that, you can go back with the back arrow. Uh, save as will bring up the system save as menu. Version is very handy. If you want to change something, you can scroll to just change one of these dials that's behind the pop-up menu and say, okay, let's make a version. Oh, it's default two. I guess we already had a default one. Okay. So that's a fast way to save a lot of patches if that's your thing. To round it out, we've got copy paste and revert. Moving on, we've got the registration area. Just like in Alto, we can see our license is up to date. And on the dials, there's one additional kind of way we can access the pop-up menu, which is a click and hold. If we click for a little bit, we start to see this circle zooming in. And if we click for long enough and hold without moving, the pop-up menu comes up. That's needed because if you click just a little bit in the dial, it sets the new location. So click and hold to get the menu. In this case, the control has no LFO, so that's grayed out, but we can see that MIDI Learn is available, so let's take a look at that. By clicking on Learn, we see the MIDI Learn menu, which has a source and an amount. Now, the source is written in a way that I wanted to make it compatible with MPE controllers that are out there. I've noticed that when you have an MPE controller, you might be sending out different continuous controllers on MIDI from X, Y, and Z, say from one finger touch. And a lot of UIs, what they do with that is they kind of uh, oscillate wildly between different controls you're sending out and it's not very helpful. So what I do, I've just got a bunch of faders here I can send out different controls on, is I just put them all into a menu. And that way you can select the one that you really meant. Uh, in this case, 19 and then you can dial in the amount with the amount dial. All right, moving on, the LFO is available on the size dial, so we can go into that menu and dial up the amount to get some LFO happening. Uh, we've got different wave shapes. We've got sine, saw, triangle, and noise. And we can change the rate on these things from very, very slow up to 16 hertz. Um, in the upper right, we have a choice between free and sync. Sync uh, will let you choose a division of the master clock if you're in a host environment with a master clock and sync multiple alto verbs together that way. Uh, the amount, of course, lets you dial in the amount of the control. Um, 
clicking on X or anywhere else will dispel a pop-up menu and you can go about your business. So I hope you've enjoyed this preview and if you're not interested in trying the beta, well, um, it seems pretty solid right now. So I expect the release version will be out soon. Knock on wood. And uh, a Sumu beta will be coming out sometime this spring. So stay tuned. Thanks for your support and bye for now.